once again on your curve came them chrome 84s like them chunky ass folks so i'm hollering at these bopping hoes talking all this shit no one damn well she's on my dick Slime behind a man's back talking about i lick the click bitch you got me fucked up see that pussy will make me vomit but you wrote my dick so many times i should have wrote metro on my stomach and plus your cousin yep stay was buzzing all them hoes was flagging me down once they saw me swooping down cullin with that jewel in the air dog fuck y'all fuck them laws they kill uh swishes in the drawers acting kind of bad all the slab about g's tv back at it again another interview uh today we in lake charles we interviewing a triple og out of lake charles uh you know you might have heard him you know esg shouting him out on the screw tapes uh you know if you from lake charles louisiana uh, you know from the 90s back in the day in Houston, you might have heard of him. Uh, we got Nicky Shops in here, so you know, just uh, you know, introduce yourself. You know, explain to the viewers who you are a little bit. Shit, you pretty much said it. Mm -hmm. Nicky Shops, Nick Shops, out of Lake Charles. Mm -hmm. Really, truly, I'm out of Houston, though. You know, I came out this way through the circumstances, but I'm out of Fifth Ward. That's where I was born at. A lot of people don't know that, but I went to middle school and high school out here, so. Mm -hmm. So how did you come to Lake Charles? I always thought you was born and nah, you know, raised and then went to Houston. Nah, I went from Lake Charles to Las Vegas. You know, had a couple of people die. We ended up coming down here. You know, that's where my mama got buried at out here. Mm -hmm. So I flew on, on a plane with my mama under the plane. So she got buried on Appaloosa Street in Gospel. And she was from out here. Mm -hmm. she, that's all, you know. Old man burned out, got stuck out out here. Mm -hmm. So originally coming out of uh, Fifth Ward, being born in Fifth Ward, you know, what age did you kind of move to Lake Charles? Shit, about 11. 11? 10, 11 years old, something so, like that, back and forth. I went to elementary school in Las Vegas, and mm -hmm. I ended up dying there after that, after second grade, about second grade, third grade. So a little younger than 11, was about 9, 10, 11, but back and forth. Mm -hmm. so. so what was the culture kind of like in Lake Charles when you moved down here? Because, you know, it's kind of like a small, you know, a, Little bit more of a country or town, you know what I'm saying? So how was it more different from, you know, where you was born at? Oh shit, you young, so you don't really know. You know, mm -hmm. I know it was all gravel roads and big ass gray rocks everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, just I was just having to be down there with all my cousins. Mm -hmm. You know, I got 44 first cousins out of God Sports, so all my cousins was out here. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandma had 18 kids, so mm -hmm. I was happy to be out here. Yeah. You know? And out here in Lake Charles, you know, as you're coming up, you know, uh, middle school, high school, was it kind of like a car scene out here where there'd be like uh, people fixing up hot rods or fixing up low riders or, you know, anything like that? Was there anybody fixing up cars in Lake Charles during that time when you was a kid? Yeah. Well, they had one nigga, man, had them 442s, had two 442 cutlasses. Had a couple of double headlights, well not double headlights, just a thousand on Kawasaki 1000. But I don't even know who that nigga was. Mm -hmm. it was down the street from my grandmother's house. You know, back in the middle, just playing Corvettes and shit like that, kind of fucking with motors. There wasn't nobody really, you know, my, my uncle had a, a drop top Grand Le Mans and he had a Chevelle, but it wasn't no, it was more like some muscle car shit back then. It wasn't necessarily like a, kind of like a slab lowrider scene. Nah. You so, know, it was like a, a muscle car scene. So do you know who how kind of that got to Lake Charles in the very, very beginning and who might have been that first person? First person I saw down with my cousin. Mm -hmm. They was from South Park, so they, you know, they would come down here for like Christmas and shit. We would slowly bring the shit down here, you know. Start off with a cut, up in and Sean had like um, a 77 colors. You know, had to, had to drop in dirt on 85s and bows. Then his little brother he ended up moving down here. He had a 79 MC, but that was his brother swinging, so he had 84s on there, but ain't nobody know what it was. We was in middle school. Mm -hmm. You know, we had Ricardo seats in that motherfucker and everything dropped in the dirt with music. Ain't nobody know though. Mm -hmm. You know, my cousin come down, he had a colors, a drop top colors. Um, Candy red with peanut butter inside, with a car row seats. You know, we'll flip the wheel, let niggas see it and burn on out. But that had to be, man. That was when, um, that motherfucking song, man. When that fucking I Ain't No Joke and all that shit came out. What, that was 88? Yeah, like in the 80s, late 80s. 
Yeah. And what would you say your cousin's name was? His name is Sean Mose. Sean Mose. Yeah. Okay. South okay. Park went to Harlem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I know from my understanding, you know, people always talk about, you know, kind of like the OGs in Lake Charles, they always say you and Calvin. So, you know, can you speak on like the first kind of cars you might have got and started putting together? First car I bought from a um, from lady at church. My grandmother bought it for me. It was a, she sold me that car for the car had like sixty thousand miles, a seventy nine MC. So I took that motherfucker straight to Houston, went to that mine, came up the shop and heated them springs and dropped that bitch in the dirt. And I stole my thirties. I came back on thirties and inches. I was in the tenth grade though, mm -hmm. so it was just I just had a, a dropped ass cone on some thirties and inches. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't had no swings up, but I was in the tenth grade. So you was going back and forth between Lake Charles and Houston, like all throughout your life. Oh yeah, I stayed in Houston more than I stayed in Lake Charles. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I, went there. I down and went to Houston every other day. Yeah, sometimes two times a day. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you know when you would leave here and go out there, you know what was you kind of seeing, and who was some of the kind of people you were seeing in Houston? You know, like the area that you would go to when you would go out there. Shit, we was right off Long Drive in MLK, so shit, back then it was, we stood out, that nigga named Rat, had all them on, he had three different cars, had a nine, they all them up was painted the same color, it was kind of like a, a bubblegum blue with a dark blue, a dark blue on, that's when they were playing them shell tops, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, but he had a, a nine, he had a cut, he had a whole bunch of shit, he had Terry Skinner, I think Terry Skinner's still out there doing his thing, you know, what I'm yeah, Gangsta Greg, fucking on um, Bud and them. You had them. It, that shit probably came a little late, like the niggas from the 9 8 Posse. Like, little Mud. Little and Mud and them. Yeah, Condre. Condre had old MC, man, with a whole bunch of fucking 6 by 9s But see, I was more cooler with Condre brother, Lil Joe. You know what I'm saying? Because him, him and my cousin used to ride bikes together. Mm -hmm. But if a nigga named Strada. This when that fresh as the word was out, man, and Mantronics and shit. Strata had that L dog on swangers with a whole bunch of beat in that motherfucker. Yeah. You know what? My cousin had, them niggas was crying, so every car they had, they had a set of swangers. It might be octagons and Vogue's on there, it might be classic and Vogue's. It, it, it wasn't really no, um, the niggas just made sure when the car they had, they had rims on that bitch. They tried to throw some ricks in there. Mm -hmm. Hey, you just mentioned uh, Condre, and Houston Condre kind of like that name that everybody know, you know, you know about his cars and stuff like that. So what, what was the cars that he was putting together and why did he become like so infamous in the streets with the cars, you know? Everybody always talk about the LeCab, but from my understanding, there was more cars he had. He had BMWs, you know, uh, I even heard a story, he had a Bentley on Swingers before. I ain't, I ain't see him like that, so, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I know he had that Charger, and he had that, um, that clean-ass Fleetwood with a drop-top on the motherfucker. That's the two that stood out to me was that, that 79 MC that he had. I don't know what that Fleetwood was. That's when that all that old gray pieces at the bottom shit started, kind of like he was the first one I seen with that. With the gray pieces. Yeah, right when that, um, right around that time, right before that DEA tape dropped. I, I remember seeing him before that car wash closed on MLK and St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I seen him in that drop top Fleetwood. It was him and KK. Damn, that motherfucker clean. It was blue. Mm -hmm. That bitch was nasty. I had never seen that before. We had the drop top two dope Fleetwood. It had gray in size and it was, it was candy blue. Yeah. But outside of that, I wasn't, I wasn't like that in that neighborhood to just see him, you know what I'm saying, every day. Yeah. And you just speak about the car wash on MLK, and I always hear about the car wash that, you know, uh, you know, back in the day, like the late '80s, early '90s, kind of around there, you would see people like Keith Babin, uh, Smitty pulling up. You know, what what cars was they rolling in, pulling up to that car wash? Well, Smitty, man, I, Smitty, I, two little times I seen Smitty. You know, he kind of like a like a ghost, a legend, but. My cousin them rolled with him. They they wasn't part of his main clique, but he had a whole bunch of people he associated with. I I just remember them popping out with that burn orange. I think it was a burn orange Benz. And he had put a flag kit on the back of that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. But I always remember, man, we had went to the southwest side when it wasn't really 
had to be about 91, 92, whatever that, and I just, I always recall shit off of when music dropped, like that Big Daddy came to Raw. Mm -hmm. I always remember that shit, man. They had this chick named Dorothy. We was in a greenhouse patio apartments. And they had a nigga off the beat. Off the beat had to clean the spot with the fleet. Boy. They had a grill on that bitch. It was, it was buckskin with a blue arm, a blue rag on that bitch. And Smitty had one like that. That bitch was blue, dark blue with a tan rag. Had them 218s. These 218s or 215s in the back. Mm -hmm. And he come through buying that raw. And he gave that bitch a fry stick. Gave that bitch Dorothy a fry stick. And I remember she gave it to me and my cousin. We smoked that bitch. Yeah. And I, I was probably in eighth grade. Dang. Just come through that buying that raw. Yeah. I mean, that's Smitty. You know, so I ain't, I ain't never, I ain't never met him. If he'd have ran up on me, I would have never knew who he was. Mm -hmm. I just saw a couple of his pictures in the flea market. Come, I'm saying he kind of like a, a motherfucker you couldn't really too much get close to mm -hmm. if you wasn't in that that main circle. So was you coming back to Lake Charles and kind of telling your partners and everything like? Man, they got this going on out there. They got this going on out there. Because, you know, like you said, it wasn't really too much, like, slabbing going on in Lake Charles during that time. So, was you coming back, kind of, like, trying to tell your partner, man, y'all need to come out here and experience this? I wouldn't tell her. I was bringing all them niggas back. Mm -hmm. I bring whoever wanted to come back with me. Mm -hmm. I brought hundreds of niggas back to Houston, back and forth. Yeah. You know yeah they created a little pipeline on some other shit, you know? Yeah. Already, already. And from my understanding, uh, you know, you was back in the day, you was real cool with ESG. How did you meet ESG? We was in college, man. He was doing this thing where he was kind of like a, like a bounce DJ, you know, mm. kind of like long that when that Tim Smooth was out, that buzz down, all that that little vibe was out, man. With people on, in that area, man. Once you pass Lake Charles, that. That sound, that music sound is different, man. So yeah, he was he was kinda like the king of, of, of fucking bounce music or something on that on that campus. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying in that area, just on that campus. Mm -hmm. And it, his name wasn't ESG when I met him, it was Snapper. Mm -hmm. It was called Snapper the Rapper. Mm -hmm. You know, he, his, his name wasn't ESG when I met him. Yeah. But I met him through um, my partner Benny Wing. Mm -hmm. We all used to go to that commons or, or to like the um, just hanging out in college, bro. And one day I I went to go pick up Ben Wayne. He asked me, say, man, my partner could ride, and it was ESG. And he told me ESG to bring a little demo tape he had. But it was a whole bunch of like four songs. He had sampled, he had sampled that Teddy Pendergrass, that TKO beat had done a song, the dope is getting short. And he had done another little song, you know what I'm saying? And I when I caught him again, because he used to DJ for the for the college campus on Wednesday. So when he, he pulled on up out of that one on baby, just at the end of the night, he'd come walk around and freestyle and talk about what people got on and just, you know. And I just, I say, damn, man, that you can rap about dope, you know what I'm saying? Or you know, whatever, whatever, you know, dope, music, I mean, call, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Not just that bounce shit. And just say, fuck it right. So we took it from them. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, you kind of like, uh, kind of like, uh, cause I know solo, went to y'all school too. And yep. you would kinda like pay solo to like do beats so ESG could rap on the beat. I never paid solo. Solo was living in um the same apartment complex with me and my old lady. I forgot the name of them goddamn apartments. And they was already up there because they they people was already paid. So Solo came to school. His brother his brother um Bino had a Honda card on three piece momos and Solo was driving around campus on in a drop top BMW on three piece momos. They people on that Franklin College on, on MLK. And mm -hmm. I had never knew that, you know. But we was going in there. They, they was just playing. He had a, I don't even think he had an ASR 10. He had some kind of keyboard. And he was he was goddamn practicing. He wasn't, all that shit, the first six songs, it was kind of stuff I came up with, all the shit I heard in Houston. Like, just he and my cousin jamming the eyes and the brothers, maze and shit. So what he was doing, he was just taking samples and looping them. You know, like on birds that don't chirp, we took that voyage to Atlantis. On um, ain't one thing is another. We took that that brick house and mixed that with twenty three hundred Jackson Street. You know, I gotta give him credit. He he was putting some shit together, but ninety five percent of that shit was samples. You know, I hear some shit. I said like that DJ Quick outro, my real niggas. I took the shit from what Pop was saying. You know, like then like did it on the ground, my real niggas. Just put that bitch on there and lay that over there and. 
Yes, he was just freestyling off of that. Mm -hmm. And when you listen, listen to Swang and Banging, like I'm telling you, the original Swang and Banging, when you hear him say it, so I'm gonna see what y'all, y'all see what y'all making a turn into. You're gonna hear him shout out Benny Weenie, boom, and Nick Schultz. And that Swang and Banging came from two niggas that died, Galen and Pike. Mm -hmm. They got caught up with a nigga that got killed in um, Greenhouse Patio. Um, I think he was from the West Bear Square. I think his name was Ice Water. Mm -hmm. He ended up getting killed in an apartment complex and they ended up getting killed over it. Mm -hmm. Not saying they had nothing to do with it, but that's who came up with that swang and bang. Because mm -hmm. he used to always pull out that apartment complex and that, that nigga was about six, seven, six, eight. He used to always be like, a nigga swang and bang in this bitch. And that's my little partner on that song. He was rolling like that little, little nigga that was just like a little sidekick. And he was always in the back seat of the car. Just like, Nigga swing and banging. And that's him in the back line. If you ever listen to swing and bang, that's a little small. That's my pilot Swift in the back saying that shit over and over. Nigga swing and banging. Mm -hmm. Swing and banging. Yeah, it wasn't no, you know. And that nigga was just a freestyle pro. And he took it and ran with it. So you was kind of there like that first, that first album, like while it was being recorded. It was my songs, the first eight songs. I'm the one paid for it and put them in the studio. Mm -hmm. I had all the concepts on the first eight songs. Put them in the studio, little bullshit, Zydeco studio. You know, it was my change. I probably spent whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It wasn't nothing major. We sitting there, but I'm doing all the hustling. I'm getting the rental cars. I'm I'm doing all the leg work for the shit, but I ain't never 18 years old, so I didn't do the paperwork. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we end up going to the back end of the motherfucking South Park off Salinsky, kind of by the dead end. That's how we ran into KK, fucking Big 50, um, Fat Pat and all of them. That was, that was some niggas I was fucking with. You ain't know them niggas. I dropped them niggas off to that house. Mm -hmm. Jewel and all them niggas. I dropped them niggas off to that house. But I'm still running. So they sitting there. But I'm telling this nigga stop. Stop motherfucking laying shit when I ain't there. And he just kept doing it. Mm -hmm. So I knew him. But yeah. And from my understanding, you was like, once that album was being recorded, or uh, whether it be why I was recording it, when it was finished, he took you to Screw House, cause you know I tell he was messing with Screw and stuff. Nah, he ain't taking no Screw House. So you was already. Nah. And you ain't never went to Screw House. Yeah, I done been. I done took Screw to that store on um, with that store down the street from um Sharp's Time Mall. Mm -hmm. I done went there and watched Screw clothes from up for the sign and that bitch with clothes and went those shops as albums. Mm -hmm. You know, he used to always call, he thought, he thought I was J.P. Nitty. He thought I was the little nigga making the beats. We had two beat makers. It was Solo and J.P. Nitty. Every time he see, man, man, give me some of the beats. That's what I always say. I say, man, that ain't, you know what I'm saying? That ain't me because we kind of not resembled each other. We was the same size. But no, I done took Scrooge to, um, to the record shop before, man. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, nah, ain't even. How did you meet Scrooge? My partner, Jay. Mm -hmm. My partner, Jay. Okay. They brought us to Screw House, but how that shit happened, we kept going to the Southwest Garden. I kept that, I brought the demo tape back to Houston, so we stayed on the Southwest side, man, for maybe about, i say about four or five months, locked up in one of them apartment complexes, but the garden was so motherfucking crunk, so we sitting in that bitch. You could buy, you know, buy you, buy you something flipped while you're out there. But my cousin had two apartment complexes, with well, two apartments out there, one upstairs and one downstairs. One downstairs was the trap house. That's where we just all stayed in. And as that shit went on, at the end of the night, all the niggas who would hustle would go into that house at the end of the night. It's, it's like 92, man. You know what I'm saying? They smoke and drink and serve and shit. And I remember I tried the motherfucking going there and popping that fucking, um, that, that little, little demo tape I had with ESG on that. Pipe was kind of running that motherfucking, that area. Nigga said, man, take that bitch ass, shut that out, of, out there, man, and put in screw. I ain't know who the fuck Screw was. Mm -hmm. But when I was listening, I'm trying to sneak ESG shit in there so niggas can listen to it. That shit sound like a chipmunk when you following after Screw. Mm -hmm. And so when he left, I kept asking his brother Galen. I'm like, man, who the fuck Screw is? And Galen kept saying, man, we got to get this nigga to Screw House. So it was Galen and Jay brought the nigga to Screw House. They knew Screw because Pike and Galen was already buying all the Screw tapes. I ain't know who the fuck that was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's when all that, um, what was out at that time? That coming out hard had just dropped. You know what I'm saying? With Lil J and James Hensley. So this is like around like 91, 92? Yeah. Okay, okay. And you know, 
that first time going to school house, you know, what was that feeling like? Was it like who did you see when you first went over to school house? You know, who would be over there? We went a couple times in the daytime. His brother Al D was in there. And I just remember when I walked in that motherfucker, I was like, looked like a motherfucking room probably about this size. You know what I'm saying? But he had all the milk crates lined up and he had had all them albums in alphabetical order. And I just remember going in that bitch and I was going through him. He fucking around on that turn, came back and see him keep looking. And I remember he say, say little man, he said, if you motherfucking pull that bitch up, make sure you put it back where it come from or I'll never find it. Because he had all this shit in alphabetical order, but he mm -hmm. had, it had milk crates and milk crates, all that shit. And I, I just was like looking at that, that, that artwork, like, God damn, this nigga got this, this nigga got that. You know what I'm saying? The nigga had every album you can, you can motherfucking name. Mm -hmm. But I seen when I brought him to that, that album store, Man, that nigga went that bitch and spun at him two, three thousand dollars. Cause I was in the caravan that day. We loaded that bitch up with, with album after album. He bought two, he bought two of each. He said, man, I always buy two of each. He bought an instrumental and he buy whatever. Mm -hmm. We loaded that bitch up. I remember that woman turned that sign around and stayed in that bitch about two hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. Went to the back, seen his brother Al D back there. And Al D, that little, that little, that little writing you would see on them screw tapes. Me and Al D sit in the back and I kind of look, you know what I'm saying? Being no, not being no, we're just looking around. And I seen they had a little door open, man. They had a little small motherfucking door, like a closet. Man, that bitch had, that bitch was lined up with them fucking tapes, bro. It was stacked. And he had two of them double, them double cassette things that was like dubbing the motherfucking cassettes. And then they said, man, they said, man, that shit would be gone before the day go. Mm. I'm looking at man, that'd be, you know, that'd be about a thousand goddamn cassettes. Mm -hmm. Like, God damn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think I went I went to screw house maybe on um, maybe three times. Yeah. Was they ever time. recording any uh screw tapes when you was going? Nah, my partner Boone started doing that shit where you could come with your little playlist and <laughs> I wouldn't never off internet, you know what I'm saying? I I like listening to it, but I wouldn't really know. I always wanted to be I ain't want my name on no shit like that. I always wanted to be in the background, man. Mm -hmm. So I ain't never really, you know, I just like listening to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, being over at the screw house and everything. Did you ever run into Corey Blunt? No, nah, I wouldn't know him if I seen him. I, I seen him maybe about a year ago, man. I seen him on, I was in bombshells in Pearland, man. And somebody told me that was Corey Blunt, but I, I knew his, I knew his uncle in there. You know what I'm saying? I knew Ben, mm -hmm. Ben Blunt. Yeah. I knew, I don't know if Ronnie and John Green was kin to him, but I knew them. I remember him from on um, just, just that name, man. It's just a name you can't forget, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I remember when, when Lynn had that, that, when it was an old Benz 190, man, that old yellow Benz 190 way back in the days when, when Ice Cube came up, with, you know what I'm saying? When I ain't the one with the, you know, I remember Lynn, I think Lynn gave him that Benz one night. It was a yellow Benz one night. I think Corey was like 16. Mm -hmm. It was like Lynn gave Corey that Benz one night. So, mm -hmm. but I ain't for, for us knowing him. I ain't know him. Just yeah. heard his name a lot. Mm -hmm. And going back to uh, out here, it's a name I keep hearing out here. You know, kind of like everybody was kind of like messing with or whatever. Uh, who was Mr. Muhammad? Oh, that's a fishy deal. Just a man, just a tire shop man, you know. Mm -hmm. But I guess I, I ain't. I probably went there one time, man. I think he probably just kind of like a tire hustler, man. When mm -hmm. he found out people was buying bows, he put bows in his shop. I don't mm -hmm. know. It, it wasn't no shit like Big Tex was, man, off of Mr. Davis and everything. Yeah, like like Chris. See, Chris Chris was Big Tex. You know what I'm saying? Chris had that, that blazer with fish ain't biting on the back on Swangers way back in the day. Had that S10. But they, you know, that, that shop is still little. You know, they got all the grills for the talking about uh, catfish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that, nah, it, Mr. Muhammad wasn't nothing like that. He was just a neighborhood tie, man, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He probably was one of the only niggas that would put swingers on your shit. You know, you go to some people, they don't, you might have the adapters, and then niggas ain't really know how to put that shit on. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I ain't, I don't know, I ain't never really had no dealings with him like that. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, you know, uh... I know earlier when we were talking before we started recording, you started, you mentioned uh, Poopy. Can you explain yeah. to the viewers who Poopy is? Because they always say he was kind of like a slab king, like way back in the day. 
I, I don't even know what Poop was. Poopy from California. I don't. I don't know, man. But Poop, I used to see that motherfucking that that Coop the video that nigga had. The nigga nigga had that bitch dropped in the dirt on eighty fours, man. He had that big fat ass grill on that bitch, but he had them. Remember back in the days, somebody used to play them three African symbols on that grill. They used to mm. put them in a line. You know mm. what I'm saying? I used to be looking at that motherfucking Coop the video, you know. But but like I'm saying, I think Poop come out of Herm Clark with that with boy old boy from um. Uh, with that cutlass, with that burn orange cutlass, so. Smitty. Now, white boy Chris, or what oh, they call Oh, white boy, uh, white boy Glenn. White boy Glenn, yeah. Yeah, yeah Poopy from that area, you know what I'm saying? Poopy, Poopy was riding on swingers and shit when, when, when that shit really, I ain't saying it don't mean nothing now, but it was just harder to get a, a whole little set of 84s, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And when, you, when you say don't mean nothing now, saying like it meant something back then to ride on, what yeah, you mean they, by that? They, they didn't. It's kind of like like Michael Jordan might put out ten sets of such and such, and you got them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It ain't, it's kind of like it ain't. It's an unlimited amount of them now, man. So the value, you know what I'm saying? The value ain't the same because mm -hmm. you already know eighty fours ain't come on nothing but three cars. The bitch came on a Riviera a limited edition, a Tornado or an Ill Dog, and it had to be the limited editions. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Ricardos came in a, a fucking arm. Um, it had to be a limited edition Grand Prix. It'll be a limited edition Trans Am. So you ain't gonna find them big head rich unless you find them cars. Mm. Same way with Swangs, mm -hmm. you know? You, it's three cars, front wheel drive cars, them bitches gonna come on. Yeah. And you just mentioned uh, Rick Ricardo's seats. Like, how did that be like, oh, this is what we putting in that, well, this is what we putting in that cars. Yeah. Coming out of Trans Ams. Well, shit, they came out of Grand Prix too, it's just, it's just a badass seat. They got a Ricardo shop on the um, West Time. I thought the seat's like two thousand dollars a seat. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I had three sets of the motherfuckers, but um, but it's just a badass seat, man. Yeah, it's just a badass seat to have in your motherfucking car. When you got that bitch dropped in the dirt. Back in the day, when you would see a car pulling up, you know, to the car wash or wherever, uh, you know, uh, Civic Center anywhere, what what kind of music? What music would you hear coming out that car? I mean, you, see, like, you got somebody with a cutlass, no back seat, nothing but six by nines back there. You heard them for your song. Anywhere. What be that song you would hear, hear them coming up to? Man, yeah, yeah, man. I just remember that motherfucking Fresh is the Word. Mm -hmm. From that man Trimax. You know, mm -hmm. that Fresh is the Word. I remember I went to the Crank It Up contest, man, and they had this. That old boy that drop top cutters on swings, that rolling thunder has returned. And he was jamming at them up had 44 six by nines in the back, all diamonds. Mm -hmm. he, he was jamming at going back to Cali. Mm -hmm. That shit was shaking the concrete. Yeah. But that, that motherfucking fresh at the word, and you know, for shit for a second, goddamn Keith Sweat and the motherfucking I Oscar Brothers, when that, that fucking make it last forever album. But I Oscar Brothers and, and fucking Maze, Al Green. Mm -hmm. That was that's what I jammed. Yeah. You know? And you just mentioned, I, I don't think nobody ever spoke about this on, on the channel. The Crank It Up contest. What was that? It was on, um, they used to have a place, I think that place was on the north side. It's called Thunderdome. And shit, me and my, me and my cousin stole, stole his brother truck one night, man. I stole it, just snuck off in that bitch. Kept talking about that Thunderdome. And that's when I, man, that bitch was so motherfucking packed. That bitch was kind of like Gucci's on the north side way back in the late 80s. I'm talking about this motherfucking parking lot so big. And that bitch was packed wall to wall, kind of like Carrington. Mm -hmm. And you know, at the end of that night, the motherfuckers, you know, you can see where that crowd gathering up and two cars of meat. You know what I'm saying? The motherfuckers trying to compare that music. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody always talk about Gucci's. What was, what was so special about Gucci's? Everybody always talk about how like, Gucci's was like... You know, kind of like Carrington's, but it was just a little yeah, bit well, more. It was like Carrington's, but that's um, it was a North Side. It was a North Side thing. So, being I, I, you know what I'm saying, I, I went back and forth to Houston, but I wasn't out there on a the daily basis. So my cousins, you know, I ain't really like. I don't know what it was with this North Side South Side thing. So they wouldn't really go too much in on people's side of town. They wouldn't come on, you know. So I went there twice, mm -hmm. you know. And I just the the time I went, man, I, you know. The bitch was live to me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? This shit seemed more like Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, but we ain't, we ain't motherfucking on. Um, fuck with it too much, man. My, my pop ended up getting killed over some shit happened over there. Yeah. 
you know, a nigga, a nigga Swain's got stolen from up there, you know, mm -hmm. and they end up on my pot of car. Mm -hmm. They killed that nigga in front of South Lone. Yeah. You know, yeah. on the 4th of July. I still remember he was on our way to, to um, the fuck that, um, search side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, yeah, we was a couple lights behind that nigga. We was coming off the Southwest side and the, the nigga went, went off on um, that stone South Lawn. And fuck, man. I said, God damn, that's Pookie motherfucking car in the middle of the road, man. And it was laid out in that bitch, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got killed over them swingers. He had put on old ragged ass Coupe de Ville. Can you explain, like, like for the viewers that might be younger, like myself, or just maybe just not getting into the culture and everything like that, how serious the jacking, whether it be Houston or whether it be Lake Charles, how serious the jacking got foot and wheels? Out here, you probably ain't shit. Couldn't have been too serious out here because, it, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't nobody, probably about three or four sets of them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't serious out here, but in Houston, it, I, I, I can't even really say. I ain't going to lie. I can't even say. I know my partner got killed over. Mm -hmm. I know my partner. I'm, yeah. I live right there on the MLK in Kenilworth, right across the street from Popeyes, yeah. right when you pass Bill. Look to the right, right on that motherfucking cone. That was my dog. Yeah, that nigga got smoked, man. Got mm -hmm. smoked on Sky Street, man. Right in front of South Lawn at that convenience store. Yeah. And I always hear this one thing, too. Like, you know, some people would say, like, man, back in the day, elbows, 10,000. Then I hear somebody that's, like, 50 or something say, like, nah, we was getting them for about 1,500, 2,000. 1,500. My yeah. cousin had, in the shop, man, we had a shop on um, the corner of Fondra. In North Main, we had a paint body shop, and that's when they that was that was his brother paint body shop. Them niggas had them niggas had motherfucking um end up counting them bitches, man. We had like twenty something swingers in that bitch. I think it was like twenty four or twenty five of them. And I remember this little nigga, man. This little nigga from South Park, man. That nigga had a long ass scar on his face. If I called my cousin and asked that little nigga name, man, that nigga bust with the air conditioning stole all them swingers. Mm -hmm. But that was the same little nigga doing a lot of crime, and man. And that nigga, I still remember that nigga come down the motherfucking slab. That nigga had every rim on his, that nigga had a fucking, um, I think that nigga had an 83 on one, an 84, had an octagon and bow, and had a classic and bow on one car. Just showing, yeah, I, I forgot that little nigga name, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he hit, he hit us for all them swingers, but niggas wasn't really selling them. I caught a hold of something by the, um, I think I gave this woman two, two or three hundred dollars, man. And I was in Lafayette, man. I caught a set of swingers out there mm -hmm. for somebody who didn't know what they were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I heard, like, too, like, somebody told me Mr. Davis used to actually come out to, like, Louisiana to get a lot of the wheels. A lot of the wheels was out he there. Probably, he probably did. But, but like I'm saying, they ain't, ain't that many people having cars. Them, yeah. them rims came off a certain car, man. It came yeah. off of El Dorado or Tornado. Or uh, goddamn on um, Riviera, mm -hmm. and the Riviera had to be a limited edition. So you did. I was already looking for them real thing. Uh, they, yeah. they, they were not out there like that. Know what I'm saying. Yeah. So what made Lake Charles kind of gravitate towards that culture? Because you know you got other. There's other cities in Louisiana like New Orleans and stuff, but they don't ride on them. Yeah. Too far away. That's the that's your safest bet. Coming from Houston to right here to make money. Mm -hmm. it, it was all. Everybody who came through here, that was on some, that was on some, um, some money making shit. Know what I'm saying? And once you come out here on on a bunny tip, and once you start making that money and try to get a feel for what's going on in that area, then you start coming with showing a motherfucker how you really living. Mm -hmm. Know what I'm saying? And that was that was really, nigga, really showing off, really. Mm -hmm. And that's how that shit, nigga, like damn. And everybody came out here on that shit. You know, we end up pulling a bitch out here, so. Mm -hmm. And make it, oh man, little country town got all them yellow bones, they this and that. Yeah, so people migrated from down here, but the shit started out, niggas just coming down here trying to make money on the low key and got comfortable and start bringing their shit out here. Mm -hmm. That's what that was. Yeah, so when would you say, like, kind of like the peak era of, you know, like Lake Charles and like more of the west side of Louisiana, when was the slab scene kind of like, you know, at its peak around here? Mm -hmm. So it it damn near became the culture. 
I said they had had a little two or three year runs and never made they never made a peak as them, you know, niggas who was who was having a little money and able to do that. Mm-hmm. That shit kept coming in waves every three years. The motherfucking laws would knock off a group of motherfuckers and they'd be gone. Mm-hmm. You know, so it wasn't never no more than about six or seven people at a time mm-hmm. who had it. It ain't no big ass city, so it wasn't never it wasn't never no peak. It was shit how the motherfucking game go. Mm-hmm. Shit, everybody had money from the 90, 90 to ninety six. Mm-hmm. So I would say ninety to ninety six. Yeah. And after that it's just up and down, up yeah. and down. Whoever, whoever was able to survive, that little crew, that little crew probably rolled like that and shit. They had a four year run, the next crew had a four year run, so it wasn't never no peak. It was just up and down. Mm-hmm. So being that you, you know, you kinda seen the slab at its beginning stages in Houston and in Lake Charles, what's your thoughts on it now? You know, how the how people building cars today, you might see like the swinging and everybody you know, speed racing and everything. What's your thoughts on it, on it is on the culture tonight, like today? I got respect because I'd have been doing the same thing. I was eighteen. Mm-hmm. I parked my shit on the football field. You know what I'm saying? I remember my name getting called out on the intercom. Mm-hmm. Like, Who the fuck parked they car? You know, whatever. I was doing the same type shit. Yeah. I used to like the motherfucking find a song before I pull up and you know and and play out. I, I ain't care about the. Hey man, I'm mm-hmm. doing, I was doing the same shit. Mm-hmm. I respect it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you got any future bills in mind? Yeah, if I would ever find, I, I was going uh, like I said when I was looking at that um that bubblegum blue cutlass in there, man. That was that was always what I wanted to do, and I had told my cousin Sean because I'm talking about Joe Joe Pete Joe Pete and my cousin. I'm talking about them niggas it was a jam. You know what I'm saying? And used to always be over there, but. I was like, man, when when Joe P died, man, Joe P died. Oh, I think Joe Joe died about five or six years ago. I don't know how how um he was or how long ago it was, but it was around that era. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, why you don't copycat that goddamn um? I'd copycat it. I was going, to, man, let me sit and put that bitch on a video. But you got to do it exactly how it was. See, a lot of people don't know that bitch was bubblegum blue. That bitch had rainbow flakes and but. Cause he was the one I always talk about. If you ask him now, that nigga, that nigga, watch. I'm just calling and asking about that one car. And mm-hmm. hey, you talking about Smitty car? What the Smitty car, man? Yeah. Pat Pete and Joe Pete. Okay, okay. That was the cleanest car out there. They used to have a Mexican out there named Shango. Right there, right there by where um, Oscar start doing all that shit on the back, the back end of Riggs. Mm-hmm. And they start having with they had Oscar, with that Mexican Oscar, Gilbert, Shango. Let me just, just make sure I'm sure on this, man. Cause this nigga know the history of all this shit for real. Yeah. I'm just asking about this car. Just a little one little question. What's up, Hey. That car, that car Pat Pete and Joe Pete had, what color it was? Like a bubblegum blue, metallic bubblegum blue. What year it was? 77 It was a Regal. Yeah. It was nasty. Oh yeah, bubblegum blue, gold vinyl, you know, for the Regals. You know, back then, I'm saying back then, they wasn't doing that in chill. They were just throwing seats in that shit, you know what I'm saying? But they was getting paint and vinyls and all that shit real. Yeah. Find some ricks. So you find, I got some ricks. You got some? Yeah, I got a set of ricks and two sets of animals. Yeah. I need, I need, I need, but that's what I want to call them. I, I want to get a set of seven ricks. Trying to find one. Don't find one? Nah. Yeah. Who the slab king in Houston all the time? Conjure. Conjure. Think so? Mo D 
Moulin J.C. Moulin John Nicole. Yeah. 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 That's what's up. Some contract. Alright. Alright. Mm. Contract, man. Yeah. A lot of people say contract. Yeah. Was it a guy that you ever heard of on the north side named Byron Mack? You know too much about the north side. Mm hmm. But me and Keith Babbin, we was, I ain't gonna say jam, but the nigga just light up when he seen me, little nigga. That, that nigga say, man, back in the day, that nigga had a caravan, man. That nigga had all them speakers. Mm -hmm. I was I was going by that caravan. Mm -hmm. Say, man, you the only nigga I sell that caravan to, but my cousin kind of hated on me. I was, man, I had to be about 16 years old. I think he was gonna sell me that bitch by 15. Whatever you gonna send me that bitch for, but my cousin talked me out of buying it. Nigga, I'm spending all your money on this. He made me buy his own, um, his brother motherfucking blazer. Mm. Had a blazer with some fucking momos on that bitch with four fifteens. When that shit had, that shit was just a little trend. But I was like, man, I like that motherfucking caravan. That bitch was buckskin with a with a fucking burgundy rag with all that music. But when I was going over there, that nigga had nigga had that drop top the same color. He had two fucking Fifth Avenues. He had that BMW. He had all that shit, man. Mm. That motherfucking street used to be lit the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? I just go in that bitch, man. Them niggas be in that bitch shooting dice, man. I was like, man, what you sell me that motherfucking truck for? Like little Nick for you? Say, man, I like you, man. Give you that bitch, man. Give me 15000 for that bitch. He say, just for, he say, I ain't trying to sell my truck. My cousin, man, all them amps and shit burnt. And then they go, the nigga had all them. But them niggas, was, I ain't, I ain't going to say they was hating on me. I don't know why they ain't want me to buy that truck, man. Mm -hmm. What did what did he have in there? Cause everybody was talking about this car, that 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 caravan, and how he would come down the street and you hear him a mile away. Now he had he had um it it was either four eighteens or six eighteens. But when you damn, but he took all the seats out. He took all the seats out, and when you look at the back, he had them he had to put a board back there with all them auto tech amps when they first came out. Mm -hmm. So it man. He might have eight eighteens in that motherfucker. In the back end, he took that slide and dough. He backed door and redid it. That slide and dough, he sealed that dough off. He bonded over that door, whatever they did, and closed the door off like it was just a two door. Mm. But there wasn't no seats in the back. It wasn't nothing but a fucking dome. Mm. And I remember you ride through South Park, man. You had them fucking like them, um, them gun range earmuffs. Mm. There wasn't earmuffs in that motherfucker. Damn. And that's when he had that group on, on street, street military. military. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I knew him I knew him on a personal level, you know what I'm saying? Was his partner uh, Church Hill riding too? I ain't I remember a couple of dudes was riding there, but I, I I I always just dealt with him. Yeah. That's when he he, he bust out, he used to do his hair all the, kind the, of the little finger waves and all that. Yeah, but yeah, I remember he had all of them. I was like, I like the way this shit looked, man. The nigga had a whole bunch of little Turkish ropes and them bitches started off and they you know, but I ain't like I'm saying, I wasn't really I was born out there. I, I moved around out there, but I wasn't. I wasn't out there on a daily basis, so I ain't really. Mm -hmm. I ain't really know. Yeah, I really, I really, man. And my last question, man, since you kind of, you know, then seen the era from all different angles, from out there to out here, could you name your top five greatest slabs of all time that you've seen with your own eyes? When it caught my eyes, I would say that um, the one when I said, "God damn, um." When Condre, when I went to that car wash that night, man, mm -hmm. when he had that, um, that motherfucking Fleetwood. That LeCab. Man, whatever it was, it was a goddamn two-door Fleetwood with a drop top on that bitch. Yeah. It had screens. I, that's, that's the nastiest slab I've seen in, in my eyesight, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I like that one. Man, that 
Shit, that white boy shit nasty. He, he gotta be, he might be number five, but he, he in the top five. I just like the way that motherfucker look. Mm-hmm. Um, that Coop DeVille poop he had. That nigga off the beat. Because I remember Smitty pulled up, and I think I don't, I don't know if Smitty and them was, you, man, Arthur, man, Arthur shit was cleaning and Smitty shit. Smitty was the man, but Arthur shit was cleaning, and Arthur wasn't nothing but a motherfucking crime, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cause he had everything, and that nigga had that. Cause the niggas go find that motherfucking cars. That nigga had that motherfucking grill with that bitch, that bitch chrome with the gold bars. That's a Bill Glass grill. That bitch about five bands. Nigga, nigga, nigga off the shit was, yeah. Yeah. It's three, you got two more. And and sometimes the slab ain't gotta always be no motherfucking swingers. Mm-hmm. At these two niggas off the fucking arm. Um, then God's still living, Miguel got killed, man. They was on the um, Southwest side, man. I don't know if them motherfuckers some poor, I don't know what the fuck they was, but man, they was supplying all the motherfucking work. Shit, right there off Ponge in the goddamn West Airport. And nigga Miguel come through that bitch in a, a fucking arm. Um, a brand new motherfucking BMW. That bitch was wine bear with gray and size rim dot. That, that's, you know, mm-hmm. that's the shit caught my eye. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's four. Like, like I'm saying, and, and I passed by old boy shit. Old boy shit was nice on um, stick one, man. Mm-hmm. I seen that, that that stick one and that stick two. You know what I'm saying? That. Yes. Yeah, slant. Nice. You talking about that slant? Yeah. Shit was nice, yeah. man. Yeah. But like I'm saying, I ain't it's it ain't no top ten, man. It's kinda like you trying to do a top ten with rappers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't man. Cause you're gonna you're gonna be able to keep keep going on. Cause somebody gonna say such and such. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Already, man. You got any shout outs we get up out of here? Man, I wanna shout out that nigga Big T, R.I.P. ESG, you know what I'm saying? Get better, baby. See some other niggas, man, on that H Town area. I ain't seen in a while. My nigga Swift. That nigga decreasing. That nigga Funkin' Mo. You know what I'm saying? That nigga Ed from the X Mile. Shit, that's all. Um, I like the niggas I fuck with out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Already, man. It's Slab OG's TV. Got an OG up in here. Nigga Shouts. We out, man. 10-4.